If you like the content of this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content on this channel in general, please subscribe. Are you subscribed? Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Or if you are new, welcome. Happy to have you join us. I am having a crappy morning this morning. The only highlight so far, which is a pretty good highlight, is taking my dog out uh, and seeing a couple of deer who were there as we were leaving the house and were still there when we came back. And we are seven minutes from downtown, right by the river, but it is so neat to see deer on a regular basis. And when I look at the window, it is it was raining this morning, it's kind of really windy and dusty and weird, so I am, um, I'm a little down. And I thought that I would take the opportunity to pep myself back up by doing my first ever Get Ready With Me here on YouTube. And um, so I am on my first day of my brand new focus on uh, Kat Von D products. And what I'm going to be doing is using a mixture of Kat Von D products, whatever I have, and then uh, Project Pan. I've got a couple of Project Pans going on. I'll use uh, those products to complement what I don't have available in the Kat Von D products. So what I have so far is a uh, a base of skincare. So I used uh, Caudalie's Resveratrol is what it's called, Resveratrol. Put that on as my serum and then went in with the Ulta Waterfall and um, also some Physician's Formula Argon Wear Oil just to give my skin a base. And I also used derm the Dermalogica uh, I lift uh, under my eyes. It kind of depuffs a little bit and now I'm ready for primer. So let's get into the primer. I'm going to mix, use a mixture of both uh, primers today. In this case, a pore minimizing primer in my T-zone because I'm a combo skin gal. So I'm going to use this one and I'm also going to use, now I always use clips here, but it is the Becca Backlight uh, Filter Primer. So that is what I'm going to use this morning. So let me just do that and we can talk about the next step. Okay, so I use the pore minimizing primer and I'm going in with a little bit, woo, or a lot <laughs> of the Becca primer, um, more on the outside of my face. So. The last time I did a get ready with me, I was half out of frame. <laughs> I'll link that down below if you want, or in the cards. Uh, wow. It was a little rough, <laughs> but I think the second try might uh, might do better for me. Okay, so we have the priming base on. So I've got a couple things to try. Um, I'm going to use my Tarte Guard. So this is my Tarte Guard in medium. That's uh, part of my panning project. I'm going to use that as my base for the skin today. And then I'm going to try, fingers crossed, I'm going to try the Kat Von D concealer, Locket concealer, because um, that's one of the things that I received uh, as a sample, so I figure I might as well use it because I am focusing on Kat Von D product. So there we go, all over the face. Yeah, I don't know why I was so kind of bummed uh, today, uh, no idea why. I just, I think I've been working really, really hard over the last week to 10 days. And I think I'm just getting a little fried, to be honest. I, um, yeah, I think I, I need a little bit of a breather. And um, I think we all get that way once in a while where the overwhelm can get to us. And that's where I feel like I am today, uh, a little overwhelmed. And uh, now the only thing with Tarte Guard I should mention is that you really need to be careful 
not to get some in your eyes because it can burn. It's got SPF in it. So it's not like just a regular face product. It can kind of mess up. Is this pilling? No, oh, I have a little bit of something going on, but I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, I should also mention uh, as part of the, the, the base for my face, I also have some uh, Paula's Choice Vitamin C uh, Resist Spot Treatment because I'm trying to uh, lighten up these darker spots that I have um, on my face. And uh, it works really well. I've just been really bad about using it lately. So, yeah. Anyway, cool. So we've got the, the Tarte Guard. That's cool. Now, this is the Locket kind of sample set that I received and there are four shades. I'm going to use the light neutral today. It's a guess. It might be this one or this one. I'm not sure. I'm going to try it under under my eyes and see how that works and a little bit around my nose because I have some redness around my nose as well. So let's give it a try. Wish me luck. I'm going to use my fingers for this too because that's the way I roll and we are going to see how it works. A little bit goes a long way here. I think I put too much on. Let's put a little bit under my nose here. Wow, this stuff is intense. I am not used to using a concealer that is that strong. Holy cow. Now, if this puppy doesn't really crease, I am in love. Okay, let's, uh, let's keep this going. I really like this color on me right now. I'm going to try some other ones, but really nice so far. I'm kind of partial to the Boing uh, concealers right now and the Maybelline Fit Me. But this one is really cool. Maybe I just need to try some, some more concealers. Maybe I'm just... Um, been under a rock somewhere. <laughs> okay, so let's finish up on the nose. It doesn't seem to dry too quickly, which is kind of nice. Oh, I need a lot more around the nose. Gosh, anybody else have these little red veins? I've been thinking of even getting them removed because a lot of times I don't like to wear like full foundation makeup and uh, they always bother me because I've had them since I was 12 or 13, but it's it always made me think of like an, an old lady thing where the red veins develop and uh, and I just, I don't like it. I really don't like it. Okay, I think that's what I'm going to do so far. I'm not big on concealing all of my color I just figure that's that's how I am and um, people will just take me as I am and it does help that um, I am putting on a powder afterwards so I can um, kind of add, just add another layer so I'm going to use the Physicians Formula uh, translucent powder and then the CoverGirl Advanced Radiance and I just realized I don't have my brush so I'm going to go grab it right away and I just grabbed all my brushes because <laughs> I realized I didn't bring any brushes. That's really great, great, to, <laughs> great planning it in. You're doing great. Like I said, I'm a little off this morning. Okay, so this is my Physicians Formula translucent powder. It's part of my project pan, rolling project pan. And so let's uh, let's go and have some fun with this here. When it comes to complexion products, I'm pretty easygoing. Uh, no big fanfare. I'm just tapping this stuff in. And I don't go under my eye so much with this one. I uh, use the CoverGirl Radiance 105, although the CoverGirl Radiance does tend to give me like creasing under my eye. And I know I need to use a lighter powder, but I'm trying to just finish up the CoverGirl uh, before buying something else, because I know that as soon as I buy something else or try something else, <laughs> I won't finish it. So I'd rather be ignorant and keep using a powder that I know is not all that great for me under the eye. So that is the reality for me right now and my hair is not cooperating. I think it's because of the, the like the weird kind of weather outside. 
it's um it just is affecting all aspects of me I guess okay so we're gonna do the cover girl I try to put it on the high points of my face so bridge of my nose chin and also to brighten up the eye like I said it does funny things but maybe oh maybe with this concealer it's better I'm I'm okay with it right now okay that is cool if that concealer is that good I'm buying it I guess I will have to <laughs> report back on what happens with that one Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bronze my face and this is the Butter Bronzer from Physicians Formula, again part of a project pan and I'm going to use my, oh I didn't tell you what my brush was, uh, my brush is just a regular Quo uh, brush from the drugstore here in Canada called Shoppers Drug Mart. I'm actually going to use a contouring brush that I have from Kat Von D. So I'm going to use the fluffy side, I think, to bronze my face. I think it'll work fine. I just want to, to really make better use of, um, of this brush, so let's, let's give it a go. It's, this is really small, but still, I think I can make this work. So let's, let's give it a go. I, and I'll use the bigger brush if it doesn't work. So my husband is away this week. He um, is into sailing. So he has decided to take a um, sailing course about an hour north in uh, Gimli. And um, it is, if you're not familiar with, uh, with Canada or Manitoba for that matter, it is about an hour north of Winnipeg where I live. And we have a lake that is insanely huge called Lake Winnipeg. And that's where he's sailing right now. It's basically it's larger than some seas. So it's, um, it's a lake that um, is very popular in the summer right now, and we're in July. So he is off there during the warmest time of the year to go and learn how to sail. And he's really been into it. He's read like three 800 page books um, on sailing and a number of other smaller ones. He's really into it and so who am I to say that that is not a good pursuit? So I am here on my own this week, pretty much. And uh, and this is, this is okay. All right, so I got my dog, which is great. She's keeping me company. I'll insert a picture just so that you can see. She's just such a sweetheart. Her name is Silhouette, and she's fantastic. There have been a couple of videos where she's made some noise downstairs, <laughs> really funny noises. So she keeps me company even if she doesn't tend to come upstairs. Um, she's just not someone to come to the second floor, or someone, a dog to come to the second floor, which is really unusual to me for a dog that does stairs. She doesn't want to uh, to come and explore the upstairs all that much. Anyway, done with the butter bronzer, I think. Hmm, not liking what's going on on the side of my face here, but it's going to have to do. I am uh, going to go straight into the blush. It is going to be the Plum Rose Blush. Going straight into blush, this is what it looks like. And... I'm totally using this for the wrong reason, but I'm going to use it anyway. Because I already know that I'm going in with the Plum Quad from Kat Von D. So it's pretty easy to know that this blush will go well with what I'm going to have on my eye. And I do do my face first. I don't worry about fallout. Um, I haven't had a situation yet where the fallout has messed up my makeup. Who knows, maybe today will be the day. But I'm, I don't find that I'm all that worried about it. Okay, so that will do for the blush. I will put this away for now. And if you're not familiar with this brush, it comes with this neat case. And by what I've seen, Sephora has a similar, very similar brush, by the way, if you're curious. I bought this, bl uh, this blush, <laughs> this brush, when I was going to travel to Guatemala, 
and not realizing well enough that it would be so darn humid there that I wouldn't really use powder products and I used it all of once or twice. It was kind of a waste of space. We don't, we don't travel with big suitcases, so that was a substantial amount of space for something I didn't really end up using. Okay, so what are we gonna do? I think we're gonna go for eyes next. I'm going to first off use a product that I don't even know if it does anything and it is the Benefit um, Brow Primer. I got it as part of a kit and I'm just trying to use it up because, well, like I said, I don't know if it does anything uh, but I have it and I might as well use it till it's gone. Um, brows is not really something I'm, I worry about very much um, but it does kind of go on pretty wet and I don't want to um, have to deal with putting brow product in until it is dry. Now I'm going to use the Benefit High Brow, looks like this, to highlight the brow bone and then the inner portion of my eye. I put powder over top so I never know if doing this inner highlight works very well. It works when I'm putting a powder, a light powder right away on top of it. Um, but today I'm not doing a shadow right on top of it. I'm actually going to use a powder primer so I don't know. Not sure. Um, the reason I'm using these products is they're very tacky like an eyeshadow primer. I guess to me it's like the equivalent of using a like a paint pot from MAC, although I've never owned one, but it just, based on the description I've heard, it sounds like it's similar. So I use that, and then I'm going to use, now I depotted this, this is actually the Laura Mercier Caviar Stick in Au Naturel, and ooh, it's in my project can, and as you can see I have very, very little left, so I'm very motivated to use it, and I use it, I think just like somebody would use a painterly paint pot and I'm just tapping it onto the rest of my eyelid in places where I didn't want it to be quite so highlighted. And other side. Yeah, I said I, did, I put it where I don't want it highlighted and I ended up putting it on my inner eye as well. Way to go, Elan. Way to go. Okay. Am I reasonable? I think so. And we're moving on to using the powder primer. Okay, you really start understanding all the steps that you take when <laughs> you're doing a get ready with me as I'm figuring out because I'm not my usual setup so I'm a little disorganized. So I use something really weird uh, to use to do my uh, powder priming of the eye and that is I use a uh, concealer brush, multitasker concealer brush. I love the texture of this brush and so tough. It says it's for one thing, I use it for whatever I want. It's, um, it's a Sephora collection brush. So what I'm doing is using the Sephora powder primer right here. Woo! As it goes. Okay, and let's put a little powder on the eyelid. I like using this powder because it really matches my skin and then gives me a powder base to build eyeshadows especially when they're really pigmented and I don't know what to expect from the Kat Von D powders so I'm being cautious not going straight in now I could go in straight with the base but I just don't know how it's going to behave so I'd rather be careful alright I'm gonna go in and do my brows now. Um, I don't want to do my eyes then my brows. I'd rather get my eyebrows out of the way. And I am, I have a lot of brows and I would definitely not say that I'm good at doing my brows. So bear with me. If it tends to take too long, <laughs> I might just speed through this part of the video because you'll be here all day. So I was talking about my dog Silhouette. We have had her for two months now and she is absolutely fantastic. Um, 
we had another dog, and we've, we've fostered quite a few, but we had another dog that we had for over five and a half years called Isabelle. And Isabelle, unfortunately, in really um, suddenly, within two weeks, she was gone. She ended up having uh, cancer and uh, was passing away of, of heart failure due to the the advanced stage of, of the cancer and um, and it was just under her spine so it's not a cancer that was easy to find easy to detect earlier and we were really heartbroken because she was only she was going to be nine and um, I really felt robbed because she was a greyhound and greyhounds are usually long-lived dogs for big dogs and um, she was supposed to be with us for, you know, 14-ish years, <laughs> and we lost her um, so quickly. So, yeah, um, we went for a couple of months without having a dog and ended up being in Guatemala dog sitting, so that was kind of nice because we got our dog fix, even though we didn't unexpectedly didn't have a dog anymore. And we were back in Winnipeg maybe two weeks, and I said to my husband, we need a dog, like, now. So we uh, we rescued Silhouette, and she has been absolutely fantastic. So, so happy to have her in our lives. And she's somewhere between two and, um, well, nearly three or nearly four years old. Because uh, she came from up north, and um, so her records are not that great as far as knowing what her history is. But she is so loving, so affectionate. She's like a big teddy bear, very big furry teddy bear. And I love her to pieces. And she's so great with people. And it's really important because we have a home-based business. And uh, it would be really tough for us to have a dog that doesn't get along with people. And we have fostered one of those. It was horrible. It was a horrible experience. You know what, I never do my eyebrows with a little mirror like this, but I think I might have to change my ways here because it seems to be going better than my eyebrows usually go. So there you go. Thank you guys. By doing a get ready with me, I am learning things. Okay. So let's see how we can just finish. I have a brow hair on here. Okay. Now this is the, if you're not sure what I'm using here, it is the NYX uh, Micro Brow in taupe, I believe. Yeah, in taupe. It's a MBP01 taupe. Okay, let's do this pulley again and see what that looks like. I'm going to call these done, I think. Okay, let's finish these off with brow gel. So the brow gel is the Anastasia brow gel that I've been using for a number of uh, brand new focus, I guess two so far, brand new focus efforts. There was the Anastasia Beverly Hills. Obviously, that's where I started using the clear brow gel. And I'm really happy that I have a backup deluxe sample because this stuff is awesome. I'm going to see if I can find a, a drugstore equivalent. If you have suggestions, I'm all ears because I don't feel like this should be a luxury item. I mean, it's just it's just basically hairspray for your for your brow. So I don't really want to use anything. Well, hairspray gel, I guess, for your brow. I don't really want to pay twenty bucks for this. Okay, so there we go. Clear eyebrow, clear brow gel. Going to eyes, I'm going to use the Shade and Light Quad and I'm using Plum today. The only thing I've done so far is swatch and given the base shade is also pretty neutral, I'm going to use that same contouring brush that I was using earlier and um, let's give this a go. Ooh, pretty powdery actually. Okay, so let's see. Doing the base here and the base is probably what I'm going to have in the inner corner for now. I might change my mind. Okay, so K 
kicked up enough powder to do the other side. You never know a given brand of shadow until you start using it and I don't have an issue with powder it's just a question of how to put my brush in the pan and some eyeshadows are really hard some eyeshadows are really creamy some eyeshadows are just powdery whatever I'm good with all of the different formulas to be honest it's just learning how to use them okay so I've got the base down and I think I'm going to go in with the taupey shade in the crease. I'm going to use a crease brush for that. And I'm going to use this Sephora, what's it called? Rounded crease brush. So this one. That's what I'm going to use next. All right, let's try this out. Okay. So we've, we've been into uh, dogs for quite a while. Uh, when we got Isabelle, we started um, doing some fostering of dogs, and it's been a really great experience to help uh, a greyhound come off the racetrack and get used to this thing called a house, because they, they usually live in cages while they're racing, their racing career, and to just get them used to what life is like when um, they're not on the track anymore and they get to kind of essentially have a, a retirement life and, and get to know a family and, and live with a family. It's really neat. But at first, they get into a house. They don't understand what stairs are. Um, they have to learn that when a door opens, they don't have to start running, you know, because that's what the gates are at the racetrack. And so it's really neat to be part of that, I guess, introduction and in a way rehabilitation of these dogs who've had a, for all intents and purposes a really tough life. So Okay so there we go that is the the base and that taupey crease shade and I am going to go in with the plum so let's try it out. Uh, I really like this brush again from that same Sephora set it's an angle shadow brush and I only have one of those, so I really, really like it. It just gives me a lot of precision, despite the fact that it's still relatively fluffy. Okay, I'm going to go with a light hand because I don't know how pigmented these are. Oh yeah, pigmented. <laughs> so let's just see how it goes. You know what? I'm already feeling a whole lot better. So thanks for being patient with me as I was kind of saying I was having a weird day. Um, yeah, feeling a whole lot better already. I'll be able to go back to the computer and work and just kind of get into things. Okay, so... What's this looking like, guys? You know what, the, the um, plum feels a little patchy to me. Well, it seems to be blending out, but it takes some, some work. Okay. Okay, I'm not, I'm not mad at this, at this color. Getting a bit bolder on this side, because I'm now understanding how it applies. Alright. Anybody else do funny faces when you put your makeup on? I'm sure I've been doing all sorts of funny things not realizing what I look like. I'm going to have a lot of fun editing this going, ooh, ah, ooh. All right. Okay, so here we go. Let's see what this looks like. Is it pretty even? Oh, I put more on that side. Let's just even it up a little bit. Hmm. I need to work on this side a little bit more. They take a little bit of work to blend, but when you focus on it, they do blend. Now, I want to take it down uh, below the lower lash line, but, well, not below, but on the lower lash line, and these brushes are too fluffy, and I have a brush that I like using if I can find it. There it is. It was hiding at the back there. Okay, so this is technically supposed to be a brow brush. There are no rules 
I use it for my lower lash line. So I'm going to go in first off with the taupe and go below the lash line with the taupe. And then I'm going to use the same brush and go into the plum and put it closer to the lash, well right on the lashes. Who am I kidding? Right on the lashes. Okay, so that's the taupe and I'm going to go right in with what to me, she says plum, but to me that's more like an eggplant color. Alright, I like this. Okay, I'm going to line the outer edge of my upper eye as well, even though I'm going to be putting tattoo liner on top. I just want to see what it looks like. Huh? Pretty nice. I could just put eyelashes on. Um, I, I, who, who am I kidding? I don't do eyelashes. What I'm saying is I could put um, mascara on and be done with it. Okay. Don't know if I put taupe on. I don't see very much. It is a little bit, but all right. Okay, let's go with the plum. All right, I'm liking this uh, a lot. So I'm going to go and use the white now to get right under the brow. I'm going to use a Quo, just a regular Quo, Quo, Quo uh, drugstore brush. And I'm gonna go right under the eyebrow right on the brow bone and lighten that up a little bit. I'm also going to go right in right here and lighten that up a little bit as well. Are they even? Okay, so what do we think? Okay, decent? I feel like there's a blob there. Oh, my eye's watering. That's weird. Okay, so, all right, doing okay? We are going to go in with the tattoo liner. So this is a deluxe sample of the tattoo liner. I'm gonna grab that trusty mirror again that I was using in the little Tarte Magnetic Palette. Funny story on liner, I was using a Sephora Classic Felt Liner and I'd been using it for months and finally I was doing a brand new focus and started using the Stila Liner and I realized that I was not sucky at liner, I was just using a liner that was too dry and as soon as I started using the Stila it was like I could do liner again. So I'm not going to do a big wing here because I got stuff going on today and I don't feel like having a wing. So this is going to be enough. And off to the other side. And this goes on pretty easily. I only used it a couple times before during vacation because it's smaller than a full size and I thought that was going to be useful for you know packing lighter. But I find I don't do a whole lot of liquid liner like this on vacation, unless I'm going out for dinner. I'll usually do mascara, just not a whole lot on with liner. There we go. I do on occasion do... Um, a wing even if I've got a ton of stuff going on but today I'm just not I'm just not in the mood as I add a tiny flick on the end there um, no I'm, I'm just not in the mood so this is going to be the extent of my liner I'm going to go in with mascara I'm going to use my sample of Monsieur Big from Lancôme Lancôme I don't know why I say it, uh, pronounce it in English when I my first language is French. I learned uh, English when I was eight years old, actually. My parents, um, both 
first uh, language is uh, French and I uh, was raised in a very French household here in the Canadian prairies. All right, this is cool. I don't usually do my mascara this up close to a mirror. It's so nice to see all my facial flaws nice up and close. <laughs> Not used to it. All right, let's keep this going. So if you ever want to know how to say a product that is clearly a French name, I am happy to help. So I will restate Monsieur Big by Lancôme. And I like this mascara a lot. I like it so much. This is my second sample. And I have, when Sephora had its, um, I guess the 100 point perks, the waterproof came up for grabs and the Sol de Janeiro Brazil cream, the Boom Boom cream. Well, I placed two orders for things I'd been thinking about for a while to order those couple of hundred point perks with the points I'd had accumulated. I did that in, I showed a mini haul some time ago with, with those products. And oh my gosh, I haven't used any of them yet because I have right now 10 or so mascaras open, which is why I'm trying to use this up. And I told myself I could not open up more mascaras until I got more of these used up. All right. So there we go. I think that's enough mascara. I think maybe on a little bit more. I like mascara. I have reasonably long eyelashes. I don't tend to do um, fake eyelashes, but um, that also means I kind of like my mascara. So, but I don't like it to look super clumpy either. Like it's like trying to get. Oh God. Just as I say super clumpy, I'm getting clumpy. Hmm. Just get my spoolie out. There we go. That was better. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to use my finishing powder with another brush that I did not take out. So hang on. When I say hang on, I'm always reaching back here. So in any other videos, if I'm saying I hang on, I cut out the footage, but I'm going and rummaging back there. Okay, so I'm using um, a Makeup Forever HD powder that is also in a panning project. <laughs> Tons of stuff in my panning project. So I just, I have combo skin, so I am using the um, finishing powder just on the areas of my skin where I do get oily and nowhere else, otherwise I'm going to look like a really big mess. And I forgot to put the strobe on, but it's not in a place where I powdered, so I can do this. The, this is the Milk Makeup uh, Liquid Strobe that is also on my project pan. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some on my hand and then dab it onto my skin because it's super sparkly and I don't want to put too much on my face. So let's give this a shot. Okay, so a little bit on my nose, even though I powdered, that's gonna be okay. And then on my cheek. I don't know, this feels kind of glittery to me. I'll use it up, but I'm not a big fan. I think I need some more. It's just, it's kind of liquidy. Maybe I need to shake it up before I use it. Maybe that's the key. When I tried it last time, it was coming out better than it is right now. I don't know. Oh, there we go. Got some more products. All right, let's do some more here. I'm using a very light hand because like I said, it's kind of sparkly. And there we go. I think I'm looking okay. I'm going to put some lips on. Did I forget anything? I'm not used to doing these get ready with me. So <laughs> Did I forget anything? I don't think so. So let me wipe off the balm I have on my lips and I'm going to put on the Lolita from Kat Von D. So hang on.
Okay, I think my lips are okay. Some funky stuff here. Do I have fallout? I'm just gonna when I finish um, the eyeshadow, I usually just do this, just to get ca catch anything that fell on my cheek that I don't see. Okay, so the Lolita looks like this, and let's let's go for it. I tried on like five lip products yesterday and I'm having I'm having a dry moment here. Where did I put my there it is. I'm gonna have to bring my compact out here and, and be able to see a little bit better. Oh gosh. Yeah. Hello. It's gonna be far from a perfect lip today. It's very dry. I think I had on six different lipsticks yesterday and I didn't realize how drying they were. And guys, this is a major mess. Holy cow, it's like I've never put lipstick on. Yeah, my lips are not happy today. Yeah, my Cupid's bow is really messed up. I'm super, super dry. Let me try to fix that and I'll be right back. Okay guys, so this is the completed look. I actually had to go back in with foundation and slightly overdraw my upper lip because my upper lip is just messed up today. Um, so this is the finished look. I'm going to go in with some NYX setting spray. And this is the, <laughs> this is the matte finish. And so here you go. I hope you enjoyed this get ready with me. Thank you for keeping me company this morning. I'm feeling so much better. And um, I hope you enjoyed this first time for me to use Kat Von D products. Take care and have a great day. See you in the next video. Oh, and for anyone who's wanting to see what's on my shirt today, I'm gonna just show you guys. For anybody who does high intensity training, <laughs> you guys are gonna love that shirt, I'm sure. Uh, if you have a similar shirt or you have some other really good ones like this, um, please let me know in the comments. I'm always on the lookout for some more.